This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. This chapter is all about IFRS number five, and it covers another area of property, plant, and equipment, effectively for, for this level at least, and looks at our non-current assets held for sale and discontinued operations. So. What we've got effectively here is, is two parts to the accounting standard. It's important to note that there are two elements. Firstly, to look at your non-current assets held for sale, which is quite literal. So you own a non-current asset, property, plant and equipment, say, and you then decide to sell it. If you're deciding to sell it, it then doesn't really meet that definition of a non-current asset being held within the business to, to generate profit for more than one year. So therefore, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to make an adjustment. And we're going to have to transfer that property, plant and equipment from non-current down to, to current assets. So if we just draw it up diagrammatically as, as to what's happening, if we take our statement of financial position, and if we go through that, and look at property, plant and equipment. Our property, plant and equipment, suppose we should really, shouldn't we, put that within bum, 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 a non-current asset. That would help. So within your non-current assets, we have property, plant and equipment. And that property, plant and equipment, remember, is how that it's carrying value, isn't it? So that will be based upon cost, less your accumulated depreciation. It could be held at the revaluation model, but, but that's another issue, in which case it will be at fair value, less your accumulated depreciation. Now, what we're doing on the IFRS five is we're saying, well, look, within that property, plant and equipment, there's an asset that we have decided to sell. We've located a buyer. We've got a price arranged. However, the sale's not taking place instantaneously. We just have to wait for a few bits and pieces to be able to be processed through before it is then physically sold. But we still own this asset. But we own this asset and it's now no longer being used to generate profits for more than one year. So what we go through and do now is we have a separate category of current asset, which is your non-current assets held for sale. And what we need to go through and do that is we need to then transfer an amount from PPE to our non-current assets held for sale within current assets. But we need to look at what value that is going to be held at. And we're also going to have to look at when we're allowed to do it. Because what we will find out is that when the asset is held as a non-current asset held for sale, it is no longer depreciated. So there is an incentive for the preparers of the accounts to go through there and classify it as non-current asset held for sale to prevent depreciation being charged upon the asset to then not sell it, to then move it back into PPE at a later date, and therefore we've avoided charging depreciation for a period of time. So we have to have specific rules about when we go through and classify it as a non-current asset held for sale, and specific rules as well about what value we include it at. What we also need to go through and do is we also need to think about it from a statement of profit or loss perspective. So we're very much focused initially on the non-current assets held for sale, which at this level is looking at how things are treated on the SFP. But what we've then got to look at as well as how it appears on your statement of profit or loss with regards to a discontinued operation. Because on the statement of profit or loss, we look at our revenues. That goes down to our profit figure and within those figures there so within your revenues 
and your profits, you're making revenues and incurring costs from your discontinued and your continuing operations. And from a user's perspective, you know, we want to see what's going to happen in the future. So to be able to give a bit of predictability about the future, we want to be able to remove what isn't going to arise within the future, which will be your discontinued operations. So what we do is we effectively split things out. So we take our profit and all of our revenues and costs and look at it from your continuing operations. And then you throw in a separate line that looks at your discontinued operations. And then when you add the two together, that will then give you your total profit. And again, if you wish, well, I say if you wish, the standard then goes on to say that a breakdown of that discontinued operations, the revenues and the associated costs would then appear within your notes, the notes to the account. So what we're doing there effectively is splitting out your total profits into two profit figures. The, the profit from what's going to then happen next year, so what continues, and then the profit that will no longer continue because you've decided to close down that operation or maybe you've decided to sell that operation. And that's what effectively this chapter is all about. So the overall objective of IFRS 5 uh, is to give you, you know, it's another standard about disclosure. So we're looking about uh, disclosure in relation to discontinued operations, whether that's on the SFP, whether that's on the statement of profit or loss. And it goes through there and it gives you the user of the accounts a better opportunity to be able to interpret the results. And then you can start giving, if you like, meaningful projections about what's going to happen into the future, i.e. that non-current asset held by sale should not be there next year. Those discontinued operations, revenues, costs and profits, again, will no longer be there next year. So you can get that little bit of predictability. That's the issue, isn't it, with everything related to financial accounting. It all looks about what's happened in the past. You, know, you want to try and give a little bit of a, an idea about what's going to happen in the future. With IFRS 5, that can happen. So what we'll do is the structure of the next few videos will effectively break it down into two standards, even though it is the one. We'll look at your non-current assets held for sale first, and an example will then go through there and look at your discontinued operations second, and then have a look at some examples there. So strap yourselves in. I'm sure you'll enjoy IFRS 5, and I'll see you all shortly for the first video on our non-current assets held for sale.